Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how I shortened the drive shaft and torque tube from this 1940 Ford uh, closed drive shaft and uh, rear axle. In the last video, I showed you how I made this adapter kit so I can bolt this up to my more modern Chevy T5 transmission. I'm keeping the torque tube and, and early style drive shaft and all that but it had to be a lot shorter than the stock length. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how I cut the drive shaft short, cut new splines in it using just an end mill, and then I'll show you also how I cut the torque tube short and then fit that to length. So enjoy the video. Okay, so the situation I have here is I've got the transmission right there. This is the Chevy T5 transmission that in the previous video, I showed you how I, made, how I designed and made this adapter assembly on there. This will allow me to bolt up the early Ford closed drive shaft. It's got the early Ford U-joint in there. And then on the other side here, I've got my early Ford rear axle. So I need to connect those two. And these are the original pieces here. So the skinny one here, that's the actual drive shaft. And then this larger piece is what's called a torque tube. That goes over top of the drive shaft. Uh, this wide flange there bolts to bolts solidly to that flange on the rear axle and then up here it's got that bell which fits to other components that bolt up here into essentially a ball and socket joint and the entire rear end then will pivot from that front point right there um, it's a it's an early way of, of how they used to make um, drive trains like this it was common in the 30s and 40s and that's the method that i'm going to Go with here but obviously the stock drive shaft and torque tube length is way way too long for what i need um, the final length of the drive shaft needs to be just under 25 inches for my application here which means i need to cut it short about that much that's about 25 inches and so the way this works is on the front side you've got you know pretty normal six spline shaft right there that slides right into the U-joint. And on the back side, in the, in the rear axle, you get the same six spline um, pinion sticking out. And that fits to you know, the end of the drive shaft here where you know, both ends of the drive shaft have the same spline and this end just has a coupler that fits on the back. And this is pinned there solid. And then the front end inside of the U-joint is what, what allows like, some float to occur between the drive shaft and the U-joint. Okay, so I've got the drive shaft set up in the mill here. It's attached to this fairly crude old homemade turntable here, but it will get the job done. You can see it's got um, divisions on this right here, a little marker on there. Zero to 360 is what it's set up in, which is divisible by six, so it will work for my six spline profile that I'm doing. And essentially all I'm doing here is you can see I have it drawn out, and I just have to remove the crossed out like material here and leave the six splines. So I'm gonna do it in a few operations. Since I'm just using an end mill for it, what I'm going to start by, well I've already measured out everything that has to happen here. So I measured the outside diameter and I determined how far in from the top I need to cut for to cut a single side of the spline there. I measured how far in from the edge that I need to cut. So what I'll do is I'll position this, this um, end mill in there. I'll zero the top, zero the side, and then I'll move this in based on these dimensions there to that position. And then I'll you know, cut that single side of this spline. Then I'll rotate it, do the same thing there, cut that side of that one, rotate it again, make another cut all the way around. Once I'm finished with that, I will have completed one side of each of the six splines, but only one side. So then I have to take the end mill over to the other side, right here, and then make the same cut. Rotate it again, make the same cut, and that, and all the way around, of course, and that will have cut both sides of each spline. 
Okay, so to actually edge find the Z and the Y directions here, um, if you don't have an edge finder or anything like that, which I don't, um, you can actually just use a piece of paper. So you can see I've got this close right now, and I'll turn this on, and while it's spinning, I'll just kind of very gently hold this piece of paper in there while slowly bringing the table up here and getting the material closer to the end mill there. And then, of course, once the end mill grabs the paper, it'll just kind of fling it out, and then I can move it an extra two or three thou, the thickness of the paper, and then zero it right there. I'll do that here, and then I'll move this to the side, and then I'll do the same thing on the side there, and that will have zeroed each direction. Okay, so now you can really see the six spline profile here starting to show itself. And it cut the edges of those each spline really nicely. But as you can see, there's still a peak left in the root of each spline there. It's like that point that's left over from the first two operations. So I have to do one more operation here. I'm gonna come in with this little um, slitting saw type, type bit here and just kind of knock down that point there and flatten out the root of each spline. And then that should give me enough clearance for me to be able to slide over the, the coupler piece. All right, so I got the drive shaft there all shortened now, and I did test fit it between the rear axle there and the transmission, and it does fit quite nicely. So I'm happy with that. Really happy with how the splines turned out. A lot of times what people do um, for shortening these drive shafts is rather than re-spline it like that, they'll just put the drive shaft or this collar in the lathe, and they'll like turn down the drive shaft or bore out this, this um, adapter a little bit enough that they can hammer it on the end and then you know weld it around and put the pin through it but i'm definitely a lot more confident with you know the actual mechanical spline connection there as opposed to welded drivetrain components so that will work nicely you can see i also have the torque tube there kind of laid out on the ground kind of shows you about how short that's going to have to be so i'm going to start by cutting off the front end of it here and then i'll line it up I'll line up the ball and socket joint on the, the back of the transmission there, and then I can measure how much material I need to keep on the, the rear end of it.
All right, so as you can see here now, I've got the torque tube assembly and drive shaft in there is all assembled. Um, when I was assembling this upper clamp here, I, I put a little bit of oil in there just to stop it from rusting at all for now. But when this is all finished, uh, this whole like assembly up here with that U-joint will be packed full with grease to make sure that is nice and well lubricated. Um, but I think it looks really good. I can jump up and down this a little bit and you can kind of see how it works. It's pretty simple. It's just got the U-joint centered in this, in this ball joint and then that's where the rear end um, pivots from. So I'm really excited about this. This is really one of the final steps of the drivetrain. It's now just getting the engine back, which hopefully I'll be getting on fairly soon. But that's it for today. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.